Hey Magic Community on YouTube, T1 Gliss and Ralph here. If you've seen this card, if you know what this card is, then you probably know exactly where this is going. This is a vintage dredge list, but not just any dredge list. This is one that I made up. This is a silly little homebrew that I've taken a few times over to Tapstart and it's going to be running, you know, so let's let's go over the core of basically every dredge deck. No, no, this one is the core of every dredge deck, but we have a few more after this. This is Bazaar of Baghdad. Basically, it's a land that doesn't tap for mana, at least not on its own, but it lets you tap it to draw two, discard three. And if you think about it for just a moment, you realize, well, wait a minute, that means that I just went, I drew a card for turn, I drew two off this, and then I discarded three. I'm right back to where I started. And that's, I'm sure, how Richard Garfield intended for the card to be played. Uh, but that falls apart pretty quickly when you add in Dredge. <laughs> so Dredge is, uh, if you would draw a card, you may instead take this from your grave and put it in your hand. But in order to do that, you have to uh, take that many cards from the top of your deck and put, it, put them in your guard. So Dredge 6, which is insane, in this deck basically turns into Draw 6. You get to draw six cards because your graveyard is your hand. And Golgari Grave Troll is the best dredger. It's restricted, of course, uh, because it's a pretty good dredge six. Draw six is pretty good. And then the next step down is Stinkweed Imp. Now, it doesn't really matter what these cards do except for dredge. Uh, in this deck, we aren't going to be casting any of them, so sorry. This one is just dredge five. And then, let's see. There we go. And then we have Golgari Thug is our next one. It's Dredge 4. That's all you need to know. Ooh, that art. There you go. Okay, that's actually all you need to know. Uh, now, we're dredging and we're trying to hit creatures to put into our yard. Uh, so the main one is Narcomeba. It's a blue... Ignore the casting cost. You're never actually casting this. You get it by milling it. If you mill it, then it hits the field. So if it would be put into your graveyard from uh, the library, instead you get to put it into play. And hey, that's pretty good, as it turns out. Uh, we also have, uh, we do have some lands, actually. We have Bloodgast, uh, which has landfall, gets back from the yard. Uh, it can't block, that's a bit of a bummer. It has haste if the opponent has 10 or less life, but what we care about is that it's a creature that can come back from the yard. And you'll see why in just a second. It won't take too, too much longer. Uh, but we do have one more creature we want to get out of the way, and that is Prized Amalgam. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield, if it entered from your graveyard or you cast it from your graveyard, and conveniently we've just covered two that enter from the graveyard, uh, return it from your graveyard to the battlefield tap. So this gives you even more creatures. Now importantly, Amalgam has to be in the yard when it's triggered. It's not just something that can happen later on. So like. You hit an Arc Amoeba and then late for your dredge or your uh, draw for turn that you replaced with the dredge, and then during your bizarre activation you hit Prized Amalgam, you'll need to hit something else to trigger Amalgam. But, you know, that's easy enough to do. We'll get there. And then we have, this is kind of a creature, this is Bridge from Below. Whenever a non-token creature is put into your graveyard from play, if Bridge from Below is in your graveyard, you get to put a 2-2 zombie out. So basically, when these guys all get sacked in just a second, you get to get a bunch of tokens. And those turn out to be pretty alright, pretty decent. Now, how does the deck win? Well, there are a few different ways that Dredge typically does it. There's often a creature that gives haste, either Flamekin Zealot or Dragonlord Colagon. There's often an Ashen Rider, which is when it enters or leaves, exile a permanent. There might be, say, like a Grizzlebrand for a, a way to draw through the rest of your deck. There may be something like a Niv-Mizzet or, uh, you know, whatever, you, whatever you'd like. But, instead in this deck, so, and, and, yeah, here we go. First of all, I should say, we have Dread Return. Now, in my deck, this is only a three of. I've seen this down to one, up to four. It depends on what you're trying to do with the deck, but this one probably should be a 3 of because it's reliant on the combo. It can win just through creature damage, as you can see, but it really wants to have, you know, actual... It wants to have the combo itself. So, for no mana, just sack three creatures, you get to get a creature back from your graveyard and put it into play. Well, conveniently, we have... We have one of those. Uh, we have a few of those. We have four copies, or three copies of Sun Titan. Now, what does Sun Titan do? 
Well, if you're familiar with Sunny Dredge, it's going to be doing something a little different here. But when it enters or attacks, and you care about enters, you may return target permanent card with CMC 3 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Okay, so that's, uh, that's pretty good. So what are we getting? If you've seen the title of the deck, you know exactly what we're getting. We're getting Sahili Rai. Now, she actually is a 4 of. Importantly, her middle ability is create a token that's a copy of target artifact or creature you control, except it's an artifact in addition to its other types. That token gains haste. Oh! Oh! So we're gonna go Splinter Twin here. The combo is you Dread, reti dread Return, getting a Sun Titan, and you have to have two Sahili Rai in the yard. Sun Titan gets Sahili Rai back, Sahili Rai makes a copy of Sun Titan, Sun Titan gets the other Sahili Rai back, Legend Rule away the old one, use it to make a copy of Sun Titan, and you just do that over and over and over again until you have Infinity Sun Titans, and then you swing for yes. And this deck can go off as soon as turn two, really. Now, because it's a dredge deck, something else that I ought to note is that it's going to have four copies of Serum Powder. This is, you, you cannot keep a hand unless it has Bizarre Baghdad, period, end of story, no, you can't. Uh, and so this gives you some extra draws at it, because it replaces your mulligan with uh, showing the hand that has Serum Powder in it, and then just exiling it and drawing another seven. So it's really important in the deck as well, you, you can't play without it. Now, I have Bloodgast, and it's not just that we're rocking the Bizarre Baghdad. The other lands are deck more salvage, but they're usually just here for the dredge, uh, so that you can get them back to play them to activate or to trigger Bloodgast. However, there is another use as well, which is it allows you to pay for sphere effects. It does come in tapped, that's a bit of a bummer, but you can use it to pay for sphere of resistance and thorn of amethyst uh, and lodestone golem so that you can actually still go off. So it is important for those reasons. Now, we do have some interaction. Another way to sacrifice your creatures is Cabal Therapy. And uh, this one is just name a non-land card, often something like Force of Will, for instance. A target player reveals their hand and discards it from it all cards with that name. After you've done it the first time, which you can actually cast thanks to Dakmore Salvage. If you're able to, cast it again by sacking creature and get rid of whatever else. If you're on the play, you can, well, you can't really do it before your opponent has a chance to get out, say, like a Graph Digger's Cage, but you can name something like Ravenous Trap. You can try to deal with your opponent trying to deal with you. Uh, the next one is Mental Misstep because it counters Graph Digger's Cage and it's free. And there's a lot of blue in the deck. There's a lot of blue in the deck. You are about to see a whole lot of blue in the deck, which means that we get to run Force of Will. Now, one of the issues with Dredge is that it typically doesn't run a lot of interaction, but thankfully that's changing. You actually can run interaction here. And that means that while this may not be the f most consistent Dredge deck, because it has Force of Will and Force of Negation, it can slow the opponent down enough that it often can just get the job done anyway. Force of Negation only works on our opponent's turn, but nevertheless it gives us something that we can use to keep them from stopping us from exacting our game plan. Alright, and then the last card in the main board is a single copy of Gitaxian Probe. Let's just look at the opponent's hand, we can replace the draw with a dredge, and it's free. So there's that. Now, as for the sideboard, it's just a few different kinds of answers. We start off with Chalice of the Void, which we always bring in against Paradoxical Storm, uh, and we can bring it in on the play against a lot of decks because it, we put it on zero and it counters their Moxin. So that's one thing we can use. Another is we happen to have two copies of Chancellor of the Annex, which come in against a lot of combo matchups, uh, because these will end up being our creatures instead, uh, or we can still keep in Sun Titan, uh, but have one Sun Titan and then two Chancellor, however you want to do it, because this slows them down in the early game and keeps them from going off later on. Or at least that's the idea, that's the hope. Now, you could run Sickening Shoal here, but I'm running Force of Despair. There's a decent number of black cards in the deck, and this one will deal with any number of creatures on that turn. You can just play it at the end of their turn, and it just gets rid of all of them. Indeed, destroys all creatures that entered the battlefield that turn. Next, we have to do with something against opponents that are going to deal with our graveyard, because it will happen. This is the best answer, generally. This is a hollow one. It costs two less to cast for each card you've discard cycled or discarded. Oh, look! Bazaar of Baghdad discards three cards, so this is free. <laughs> this is a free 4-4, four four, 
And often when they go all in on trying to beat the graveyard plan, they don't have anything they can use for Hollow One anymore. I've actually lost that. And we also have two Gurmog Angler, which we can cast thanks to Deckmore Salvage. It's just a 5-5. Five five. It's, it's bigger. It, it does lose the graveyard hate, though. And then we have, for anti-graveyard hate, for the mirror, we have four Leyline of the Void. It could be something else like Ravenous Trap, but this one, we already have, you know, the best mulligan rule in Magic's history until, except like the very, very, very beginning. So, uh, yeah, we might as well run it. And we have the Serum Powders to keep looking for it as well. It makes it a lot easier. So, this one I think is the right one, and that is Sahili Dredge for Vintage. If you have any suggestions, anything else, any questions, let me know. But the deck list is also in the description, so go check that out. Thank you, Magic Community. Uh, take care. I'll see you all later. Bye-bye!